In the 20th century, Phoenix was the youngest of the 10 largest cities in the United States. It was also one of the nation's fastest growing urban areas. Millions of acres of beautiful farmland, free out west. The Homestead Act and other government programs brought energy, roads, and water to the desert. The city grew after the Roosevelt Dam started supplying water, energy, and flood control to the residents. Residents and businesses used 25% of energy on air conditioning in the hot desert climate. That's four times the national average of 6%. Citizens' desire for cheap electricity spurred lawmakers to authorize the construction of the Palo Verde Nuclear Generating Station. Today, citizens rely largely on airports as the gateway to Phoenix. Cars are the way to get around in Phoenix, and tax dollars from tourists pay the way for highway expansion. Arizona tourism is the state's second largest industry, employing more than 160,000 residents. The economy grew as developers constructed large-scale, low-density, private developments such as houses, shopping centers, and industrial parks. Motorola was one of the first corporations to relocate their headquarters to Phoenix. By the 1970s, contaminated waste emanating from the Motorola plant had made its way into the groundwater in the Garfield neighborhood and beyond. The past few days, we've all been concerned about breathing dust from all of the wind lately. But in some Valley neighborhoods, there's something rising up through the soil that has residents and health experts worried. Today, the contaminated site is twice the size of Central Park, and the neighborhood affected is as big as Manhattan. The population of local neighborhoods surrounding the site decreased over 10% in the last 10 years due to limited investment in the cleanup of the contaminated groundwater. How will new technologies enable the infrastructure required to promote a viable economic model based upon the expansion of private development in the coming century? What is the future impact of technology on the urban growth of Phoenix? On the current trajectory, privately developed technologies marketable to consumers are advancing faster than publicly developed technologies. For example, while the U.S. Postal Service is on the brink of bankruptcy, privately owned shipping companies such as UPS are employing cutting-edge technologies that continue to increase their success and position in the marketplace. In Arizona, community pundits such as Grady Gamage recognize this trajectory. And they know that we have weak public employee labor unions and we like to privatize things, so they assumed Arizona would be at the forefront of public-private partnerships, but of course we're not. Why? Because you need a public sector to have public-private partnerships. Because we don't trust the public sector to be competent enough to negotiate with the private sector to have a public-private partnership. We just want a private-private partnership. If private-private partnerships continue, then future urban infrastructures will be created by the private developer's ability to create marketable technologies more effectively than government agencies. If public funding continues declining and private companies create advanced technologies, then what impact would this have on the urban form of Phoenix? We already see examples of large private corporations controlling the urban growth of Phoenix. Companies are taking advantage of low land costs for their campuses, safe neighborhoods for employee housing, and easy access to airports for executives. The Garfield neighborhood experienced a steep decrease in land value due to the contamination by Motorola. Ironically, this area is now a prime target for a large corporation to redevelop due to its proximity to significant infrastructure including Phoenix's Sky Harbor Airport. In a desperate attempt to remediate the groundwater in the Gateway neighborhood, government agencies could entice corporations to acquire large contaminated land areas and privately redeveloped sections of the city on the condition that they use nanotechnology for remediation. These corporations investing in the Garfield neighborhood 
in addition to deploying advanced technologies, are radically reinventing the culture and lifestyle between workplace and community. Google provides dry cleaning, transportation, kitchens, daycare, and entertainment to keep their employees working 24-7. These tech campuses are increasing in scale to the size of small cities. The new Facebook headquarters unfolds the conventional office park into a sprawling single-story urban carpet covering multiple city blocks. A canopy creates the massive interior that blurs the boundaries between work, live, and play. In 2050, the new corporate lifestyle center guarantees security and workplace performance by taking the form of a vast urban building. 750-foot diameter parasols cover the new corporate neighborhood. The towers of the canopy are organized into a grid system that creates a walkable community and provides injection points to remediate the groundwater. The existing neighborhood becomes isolated by the corporate campus. Employee housing is provided by the corporation in high-rise towers above the canopy. Each tower is surrounded by a private landscape that provides leisure amenities for its corporate citizens. Existing houses, streets, and commercial buildings are encapsulated in the canopy. Conventional zoning no longer applies and opportunities to work, live, and play are clustered to optimize performance. With everything owned and maintained by the corporation, workers are not distracted by menial chores like washing dishes, mowing lawns, or fixing things around the house. Freed from housework, workers focus entirely on their jobs and leisure time. This creates a creative environment that encourages informal work around the clock. People are encouraged to exercise as part of the Integrated Preventative Health Care Program, exclusive to company workers. Outsiders are permitted in designated shopping areas owned and operated by the corporation. Productivity reaches an all-time high, with immigrant workers providing the manual services no longer undertaken by the corporate citizens. Resources are used more effectively. Saving money drives private corporations to become sustainable. Digital gateways and biomarkers ensure that outsiders are not a security risk to residents. Immigrant workers who live nearby in single-family houses provide custodial services. Advances in privatized technologies result in a divide between well-paid, high-tech communities created by large corporations and low-density, low-paid service sector workers living in unimproved urban areas. Alternatively, what if advances in technology are used to develop and improve new public infrastructures that revitalize existing neighborhoods? 
Public infrastructure investments are supported by citizens using technologies such as social networking and collaboration tools to create new networks. We admittedly have a challenging geography, but the way we dealt with our challenging geography was through collective action was through making decisions as a citizenry about how to spend money to build infrastructure to make it possible to live here. That has been the central binding ethic of this place. How do you as a society act in a way that is resilient and adaptable to the challenges that face you? Citizens have the ability to influence and construct their own environments. This creates new urban infrastructures that meld into each neighborhood's unique aesthetic. Building upon Phoenix's history of neighborhood organizations, local and federal agencies and grassroots organizations collaborate to reinvent the urban form of neighborhoods. Indian Bend Wash Green Belt Flood Control Project is a shining example of a solution that was born out of citizen concern and involvement. In 1997, more than 60 property owners along the corridor formed the 7th Avenue Merchants Association and began to lobby the city of Phoenix to create a redevelopment strategy that could restore value to their properties and businesses. The Weed and Seed Program is a Garfield community program run in collaboration with the federal government. The city of Phoenix began its targeted efforts to improve the quality of life when it selected Garfield in 1993 as one of five neighborhood initiative areas. Nationally, grassroots organizations are radically transforming the previously undesirable urban infrastructure into thriving communities. As part of the collaborative process, government agencies agree to help construct improvements to existing neighborhood infrastructure in the form of amenities. With greater citizen involvements, the urban form improves community connectivity, security, and increased density. Citizen clusters create informal, small neighborhood groups in the area with the greatest potential for transformation. Over time, a fragmented patchwork of improvements evolves throughout the district. A new landscape is born out of intense collaboration among neighbors, community leaders, local businesses, local government officials, and federal agencies. Lengthy negotiations and compromises result in unique yet uneven development patterns. Homeowners associations are no longer reactive, punitive bodies. They become proactive organizations that collaborate with government agencies. Front yards of conventionally lower density suburban streets are rezoned by local governments to allow for increased density in the form of small retail and housing developments controlled by homeowners. The front yards begin to decrease as buildings are placed facing the street narrowing the distance of house to street from 20 to 7 feet. Fences are removed and the front areas become more porous. Water for vegetation is prioritized to the streetscape, and these areas are transformed into active, comfortable, public-private areas where people interact. Obsolete neighborhood alleyways are transformed into new energy-producing recreational areas flipping the conventional front yard backyard typology, thus allowing greater connectivity. Alleyways become community amenities and pedestrian walkways. A light tensile structure is added along the base of the alleyways, providing shade and mist in the summer and producing energy and collecting water. Residents are connected to other local cities by the public transportation system, which connects to regional rail and airports. Houses produce energy and continue to be the hub of family life. Streets are changed into an organic street pattern with vegetation and informal public spaces dictating circulation. The services are interactive and informative for community efficiency.
In the coming century, will advances in technology be used to develop and improve new infrastructures that revitalize existing neighborhoods? Or will new technologies continue to promote an economic model based upon the expansion of private development? What is the future of Phoenix in 2050?